Yeah, I guess I Spy doesn't really work in the dark. Or on your own. Fuck, I'm bored. Oh, oh. oh I've got a, got a call. Hello? Hello, this is the UK Power Network calling in to let you know about the situation with your power. Yeah, what's going on? I've been stuck in the dock for ages now. I'm afraid there's been an incident at the nuclear power facility. Your reactor has gone into meltdown and started spewing toxic gases and losing all power. And on top of that, the sudden meltdown triggered an EMP which has probably damaged a load of electrical systems. Wow. Really? <laughs> no. Are you stupid? Where do you think you are? Chernobyl? There isn't a nuclear power plant anywhere near you for a start. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And a meltdown? Probably get more than a minimum wage customer service there phoning you for a meltdown. I mean, a more apt response would be the emergency services kicking your door in and dragging you from your home to escape the fallout. I mean, the company's not very good, but they'd still probably give you more warning than a phone call. Yeah, okay, I get it. Sorry, it's just, you must be really gullible to believe that. Yeah, thanks for that. Like, worryingly gullible. By some miracle someone's trusted you with a credit card, please destroy it. You're too stupid to own it. Can you just tell me about the power, please, for God's sakes? Oh, yeah. All right, well, turns out it's a lot easier to shut off the grid than we first thought. Someone must have lent on a bun or something like that. Anyway, your power's coming back on right now. Oh. Uh, how did you know that? The nuclear radiation from the meltdown has given me powerful psychic abilities. Yeah, but I thought you said there was no meltdown. Great, you're learning. Next time... Try lighting a candle. On second thoughts, the matches might be a bit tricky for you. Yeah, I'm hanging up now. A torch would be safer. Try using a torch. Well, we got the power back. Now where were we? Ooh, this game! So far, Worst KC has been a rather mixed bag of emotions for me. At points, the game has shown me some genuine scares and spooks. But as quickly as those moments of terror crop up, some unfitting scene of rather poorly delivered comedy or outright goofiness unceremoniously drags me from the experience. It's this strange seesaw effect. It's certainly not effective in terms of game design, but it's all very, very familiar when it comes to Burian. The next portion of the game begins with setting off a fire alarm in an attempt to alert the outside world of our peril. That's quite an interesting angle to the story. It matches up with the plot of many other horror mediums. See, I really want to call that cliche, but after the zombie clown and the fucking mouth spider things, I'll take anything with some semblance of a more classic horror motif. Oh, seems like the fire brigade sent in the wrong person. <laughs> I've gone numb. This game is turning me numb. I get the muffled speech because the guy is far, far away, or he's a fireman, so he's wearing a respirator, maybe, but it's just so ridiculous. It would have been much better to have just left it at the sirens. We could have done without the bad Kenny impersonation, thanks. Unfortunately, this is the point where the shallow structure of the game is made all the more clear. In the first part of the review, I mentioned a point where a zombie patrolled an area with objectives that needed interaction, forcing you to follow the zombie from a distance to complete the task and move on. Well, instead of this idea being a one-off, unique thing, turns out that every level is based upon it. An area you need to complete tasks in with an enemy guarding it who will chase you on sight. It's the same thing throughout the game. But Alex, you fucking idiot, other games do this too! <laughs> I hear you judge, and I understand that. Amnesia and Soma are two examples of games that follow this formula, but it's not as obvious as how the theme is presented in Worst Case Z. Not to mention, zombies fucking teleport now, there's no real reason for it. Sometimes it's because you go in a certain way, sometimes it's almost completely random, there's no way of knowing it'll happen, and sometimes it'll trigger the zombie to undo all the work you've done previously, like turn off the power supply or even break equipment so you have to restart the level. Now that is an entirely new level of shit right there. Wrongly, I'd assumed a zombie patrolling around tasks was a one-time thing, but nope. 
another overused formulaic gameplay style given to us by Burian. What's next? The zombies are going to be playing dead? As much as I praised the earlier parts of the game for being spooky in atmosphere, some of the environments and even entire levels are recycled. For instance, the first level with the hangar, hallways and guardroom is revisited twice more during the game, which I wouldn't be too bothered about if the game didn't have 20 levels in total. And there are points where other level parts are just copied in. It's backtracking. Did somebody say Metroidvania? No! No one said Metroidvania. It's pointless. And the purposes given for backtracking are pathetic. You'll see what I mean by that a little later. Halfway through the game, we're given a shotgun. And thank the Lord Almighty. Come here, you samba dancing bastard. Let's see you do the Charleston two-step when I shoot both your fucking legs out. You're gonna fucking get it now. You... Oh, it's full of blanks. Blanks that do no damage to zombies. can't get over the voice acting and animation, it's all so goofy. Which is a shame considering this part of the game, the prison beneath the plant, is actually quite frightening. Okay sure, it's just another area where a zombie patrols and you need to do a certain activity to proceed. This time it's turning valves to lower a water level and it's so difficult to really lose yourself in the atmosphere when every single challenge in the game is the same mechanic just given a different appearance. Valves, levers, switches, fuses, it's just the same fucking thing. But do we get a counter to show us how many things we've done or how many remain? Nope, nope, nothing like that, just a fucking compass. <sighs> but I can overlook that. I can overlook the fact the game now gives us a new zombie type that, for some unexplained reason, fires maggots at us. I can even overlook the doofus twins here killing the whole scary vibe stone dead before it's had a chance to rise from the grave. What I can't overlook is this. You know, I told myself back in the room where I found the shotgun, Alex, you handsome stallion of a man, this gun is either going to be used as a flashlight or you're going to be given live ammo later. And I hoped, I prayed that for once my pessimism would falter and I'd be given redemption for being so critical of this game. But no, no, the shotgun is used predominantly as a flashlight. You know, a split second kind of flashlight. The game puts you in this dark as fuck hallway where there's only one valve hidden somewhere in the pitch black, the final valve, and you need to use the shotgun to illuminate your way. Which would be excusable if the fucking thing didn't hold four shots and reload as fast as it'd take to construct the shells from the base parts yourself. It is agonizing and you end up stumbling around in the dark, firing off blanks just trying to find this last fucking valve, backing away from light sources to help you keep your bearings, but there's dead ends and there's circles and you go around and around and a fuck. This is fun. Yeah, this is fun, isn't it? Not being able to see. What's the difference between us and blind people right now? Nothing, because it's completely dark. Perfect, I love it. But, but it'll get better, right? It has to get better sometime, right? Just shadows. So, are 
you ready? <laughs> Feel free to scream whenever you want. Death is your only escape. Die. No! No, no! Oh my god! No! Oh! Okay! Oh. Why does she sound like Voldemort? Why does she sound like fucking Voldemort? I think the worst part is she nails us into the coffin and then we just open it back up again? Does not surprise me, considering she used a candelabra to nail the fucking thing down with. That's idiotic and impractical. Was it some sort of non-verbal agreement that I just stay in there and die? Also, why is there a camera in the coffin? A security camera? Are we wearing a fucking GoPro? It's the hat, isn't it? It's the fucking hat. It's under there. What genuine scares the game offered before are soon out the fucking window. As mentioned previously, the approach to enemy interaction is practically fucking transparent at this point, and the jump scares might startle, but they usually boil down to zombies teleporting on top of you, resetting all your progression, with whatever task you've been given up to that point, it's just annoying. Coupled with the fact that the set pieces are just so goofy and... Oh God, this fucking clown zombie! Clown! Zombie! Two things that should be scary together but just end up being ridiculous. Like, I don't know, spiders and exercise. The story so far is that there's been some sort of disaster at the power plant we work at, which is aptly named Nuclear Power Plant in the Middle City, by the way. In our attempt to escape, we've had to find our way to the prison beneath the plant and then to the sewers, desperately trying to make it out onto the streets to rendezvous with our wife at the safety shelter. When you peel away the layers, it's generic as it gets. But do you remember when I said the reasoning given for backtracking is pathetic? Well, get this, after the prison, we're led into the sewers. Here we meet... a... Templar, I guess? And the way out is locked down by a console back in the power plant. Because of course it is, because we don't question this brilliant degree of level design. To get back to the power plant we need to pull these levers guarded by the Templar. This opens a hatch allowing us to get back up to the plant. In the plant we flick the switch and make our way back down to the sewers. But once we're back down there, internal monologue dictates we turn all the levers once again to close the hatch to stop anything following us. Nope! Nope! No! no. Three fucking levels and two of them are doing the same fucking thing in the sewers, but in reverse. And here's why the logic is broken. We're trying to stop the zombies from following us, but we've already been shown they teleport anyway. So what is the fucking point? And we see zombies from the plant appear in later levels anyway, so it didn't fucking work. This is called padding. Artificially increasing the playtime with no beneficial gameplay to the player. It's chorish, repetitive, and boring. I didn't know what to expect while playing this game, Burian, but I expected better than this. I could talk about the maze-type levels introduced. I could mention about the singing nurse and how it's genuinely creepy until you realise it's the same old bullshit. I could reference the butcher level, where the guy chases you while... expressing himself... Show me the money. Mm. So good, sugar. But what I'm going to talk about is the side plot. As we get deeper into the sewer system beneath the plant, we find crates with the label human organs on them. According to fucking Sherlock Holmes here, the world's greatest detective. <laughs> There's an illegal organ harvesting operation below the power plant, which is semi-believable. 
But then, and listen to this, this is beautiful, you'll love this. But then he deduces that the meltdown was triggered as a cover up to the whole thing. What? But why though? Okay, first, Mr. Holmes, no! And second, there ain't a scrap of evidence or inkling that anyone knew a fucking thing about the harvesting operation. So what would be the point of a cover up? There was no news reports or anything shown to us throughout the game that people were going missing, only a few newspapers saying people went missing at the end, but it's still called a mysterious wave of crime. So why the need for a cover up? Further still, detonating a nuclear reactor is a bit much. Why not just stage a bank heist, or cause a riot as a distraction, or destroy evidence? Releasing an apocalyptic amount of nuclear radiation, which by the way is strong enough to turn people into zombies to cover up an organ harvesting scheme, is like covering up the stealing of someone's sandwich from their fridge by burning their fucking house down! I reject your theory, silly power plant man, and I substitute my own, and my theory is thus. They didn't know what they were doing. They had no idea what they were doing. They were just throwing it into the story, and they just made it up as they went along. They had no idea. It doesn't make sense. Pointless. I would just sincerely like to remind you that we're following the investigation of a man who will only bend down in exceptional circumstances. What does that even mean? I'm not even, I couldn't, I'm not smart enough to make that up. That's exactly what it says. Why though? From here on, nothing is truly noteworthy. The same ideas are recycled here, going from sewers to mazes to Neo Tokyo, I guess. The final level isn't even that great. It's an underground train station where you have four different areas, each patrolled by a past foe. And there's nothing complex about this. With the endless health refill on offer in each level, there's honestly no challenge. By this point, I was just pushing to see the end. Pardon me, sir, I've got no patience for you. We need to fill up this diesel generator and make our way outside. Well, how fitting. Worst case, Z is bad. I want to get that out of the way first. Burian Media Enterprises before this made Dark Shadows Army of Evil, and in the review I made, I said it could be a stepping stone, a point for them to work out the finesse of game design and have that be their starter to make better projects after that. In that regard, Worst Case Z is a failure. What scares there are to be had seem rather cheap and cliche to those familiar with the horror genre, and to those of us with a more fragile disposition, the goofy set pieces, terrible animation and repeated scares will take us out of the atmosphere before the fourth level. Plagues with backtracking, stale set pieces, poor AI and confusing level design, it's really difficult to commend anything that Burian has done here. I will say that the game is quite stable, I didn't run into any crashes or bugs on my playthrough, but that's just not enough. It's fair in difficulty, and for those of you looking to complete it, it's mercifully short, but sorry Burian, I just wasn't a fan. But now, for all my hard work, let's see the ending. Oh my god, I made it. I survived it. Where's my wife? Thank god, it was all just a dream. A nightmare. <sighs> Looks like my shift for the night is over. I guess it's time to head back home. Nuclear power plant, please. This is the office for emergencies calling from the city. Can anyone hear me? Oh my god. I did it. I finished the game! Where's my family? No, fuck that! Alexa!
play my bitching dance tune. Dance tune dot mp3 by BME. Hello? Hello? This is the UK Power Network calling in to let you know about the situation with your power. Oh, what? You, you mean this all a dream? Uh, what was all a dream? Oh, I guess we haven't spoken before, have we? No, no we haven't. Huh. Hmm, you're an idiot. Hello fellow Bin Raiders and Happy Halloween! I hope you enjoyed this two-parter and if you did, please leave a like to show your support. Comment down below, tell me what you thought, and if you like this and want to see more, consider subscribing. At the time of recording, I am so close to 200 subs, so thank you so much for your support. You can expect a few more episodes before the end of the year, as well as some Q reviews coming very soon. That's all for now Bin Raiders, keep Bin Raiding, and I'll see you next time. I'll never find